Now that we've talked about concavity, let's talk about points of inflection, or simply inflection points. Here on this graph, we have two inflection points. We have to be thinking about what is an inflection point. Now, I've kind of already alluded to it. Let's go ahead and talk about it. We can see this graph is concave up right through here because the water, again, would fall down and be caught here. So it would catch water, and the tangent line is increasing. But what happens right here? Well, it changes. The concavity changes to where if the water hit, it would run off. In other words, the tangent line would start to decrease. And then what happens is it starts to increase again. All right? And uh, then uh, something else happens. It starts to decrease again. So it goes from concave up to concave down to concave up and then back to down again. So a point of inflection is a point on the graph where the concavity changes. Okay. Now, uh, I didn't highlight this, but I will. It has to be a point, right? There are times where the concavity changes, but there's no point there. In that case, it's not a point of inflection. It's just a lot of times an asymptote or maybe a hole or something. So here's another example. This is a trig function. Looks like a sine or cosine graph. This goes from concave down right here. It starts to go concave up, meaning it holds water, then back to down, then up again, then back to down. So we want to figure out how to figure out what these points are where the concavity changes. All right, so... We're going to use the same example we did from uh, the concavity lessons. If you haven't watched that yet, make sure you watch that. This is the same function, f of x equals x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. So the first thing you do is determine concavity. I'm just going to go basically to the table because we've already went through all this with con uh, the concavity lesson. So we went all through this, all this work. And we figured out this concavity table. So this leads us to step two, which is add an inflection column. Just like when we had relative min and max for our increasing decreasing table, we will now have a new column where there are possible points of inflection. And it's pretty simple. Here we can see it goes from concave up to concave down. So we're going to add a new place here, and we can see the value that they share is zero. And I will even un underline that for you. So from one row to the next, at these two intervals, they meet at zero. So there's a possible inflection point at x equals zero since it goes from up to down right there uh, at those two intervals. Same thing from zero to two and two to infinity. They share the value of two and it goes from down to up there. So there is a possible inflection point at x equals two. Now, why is it possible? Because we still have to plug it back into the original to see if we get a point back. It has to be defined there just like relative min and max. So we're going to plug in that first value, 0, back into the original, and we get 0 back. Since we got a point back, we know there's a point inflection at 0, comma 0. We're going to plug 2 back into the original. We get negative 16 back. So that we know there will be a point of inflection at 2, negative 16. Again, that's where the concavity changes. Finally, we're going to answer with a reason. There are points of inflection at 0, 0, and 2, negative 16. Because the function is continuous there, and the concavity changes at those points. So again, if it's not continuous there, there might be an asymptote or something, in which case it's not of a point of inflection. Let's take a look and see what this graph looks like. We've already got the point of inflections labeled here. We're gonna go ahead and drag our point from left to right. We can see the tangent line is increasing, even though it's negative, it is getting more closer to positive if we go from left to right. We can see right there at that purple point, it changes to concave down, meaning the tangent line starts to decrease. And then at that purple point right here, guess what? It starts to go back up again. So we can clearly see visually here that an inflection point occurs where the concavity changes, in this case at 0, 0, and at 2, uh, negative 16. That's it for the first example. It's nothing more than just building on the concept of concavity. And again, that was for our function x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. If you have any of the questions about this, let me know.